In this episode, the BlackBerry Torch 9800 has a release date, how to build a better rocket, and a Lego bipedal robot that does stairs. Quicksurf Internet Media presents The Geekinator, talking about all things tech and geek. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona here in Studio C1 at Quicksurf Internet Media. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. Check them out at techpodcast.com and uh, check out all the other technology-related shows over there. Um, let's go ahead and get into the stories for Season 3, Episode 16. From PC World, there's a story, How to Build a Better Rocket. And uh, it's it's basically uh, a, a, a YouTube video that uh, shows a bunch of students building a rocket that's powered by a bunch of Sony equipment. Um, basically a Sony laptop. It's, a, it's the Rocket Project is what it's called. And... Me being a rocket enthusiast, I was like, oh, this is totally cool. Um, it's going to be airing on the Science Channel, I believe, uh, this fall. Um, and the YouTube video has a short clip of uh, what goes on. And it's it's all cool stuff. So uh, by all means, check it out. Let's talk about our sponsor for this episode, GoToAssist Express. There are a variety of tools that let you remotely support a client, colleague, or friend. But the only one I trust and rely on is GoToAssist Express, the best remote support tool designed for small and medium-sized businesses brought to you by Citrix. Why? Well, it has exceptional performance, it's very easy to use, and it's secure. IT professionals, really anybody who doesn't have time to squander with a tool that's slow or unreliable, will appreciate GoToAssist Express. With GoToAssist Express, you have no IT maintenance or updating, it's so fast you'll be on the other computer troubleshooting or showing them what to do in seconds, and it's consistently reliable. My audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. I repeat, my audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. From BBC News in the technology section, uh, there's a story, Wikipedia and FBI in Logo Use Row. Um, essentially, what's happening with this is Wikipedia has the FBI logo um, available on the website in a variety of sizes. Uh, the FBI apparently doesn't like it and is trying to quote law to get Wikipedia to take it down. Of course, Wikipedia has said, no, you're misquoting the law. And we're not taking it down, and we'd be happy to explain our position in court. So, uh, apparently that's exactly where it's going to be headed, and uh, we'll be keeping an eye on it to see what happens with it. From the Download Squad at DownloadSquad.com, there's a story Google begins rolling out multiple account sign-in. For those of you who actually use this feature, this is welcome news. Enough said about it. Uh, go try it out if, if you haven't already figured it out. And uh, let me know how it works. From examiner.com, there's a story. The BlackBerry Torch 9800 release date has been confirmed. This is probably one of the most anticipated Blackberries that Research in Motion has uh, manufactured in recent memory. And believe it or not, it will be available for authorized dealers to order today and will launch in corporate stores August 12th. That's right. August 12th, you will be able to get the BlackBerry Torch 9800. And it's the first uh, phone that's got a touch screen. I get, well, not necessarily the first phone, but it has a touch screen and a slider full QWERTY keyboard. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. And it's, uh, let's see, some other stuff. It's a slider touch screen phone with a full QWERTY keypad. And we'll also have a 5 megapixel camera and OS 6 which is all stuff we already knew. So uh, August 12th is when it'll be available. Check it out. From Reuters at uh, Reuters.com, that Barnes & Noble is up for sale, and the founder may bid on this. This is kind of strange. Uh, Barnes & Noble is uh, putting itself up for sale because it's uh, having some problems. And in a weird twist of fate, the founder of Barnes & Noble is, is actually trying to buy uh, Barnes & Noble. 
So Barnes and Noble is selling Barnes and Noble to itself. I I don't know. Check the story out. Um, pretty interesting stuff. From Mashable at Mashable.com, Gmail now lets you save attachments to the desktop via via drag and drop, saving Dustin. Saving dozens of email file attachments to your computer just became a hell of a lot easier. Google has added a new feature to Gmail, the ability to save file attachments by simply dragging and dropping them onto the desktop. Gee, kind of like how Outlook works and OS X Mail works. You just drag it over and drop it wherever you want. Hmm, interesting stuff. So uh, they've tried out the feature and apparently it works and it's painfully simple so pretty neat from engadget over at engadget.com there's a story here entitled lego bipedal robot takes several small stairs for man one big fall for robot kind um basically this is a video they have where this guy uh took this lego nxt system and made a robot and it climbs a, a couple of uh, those you know flat bricks the, the masonry bricks that are flat um he's got three of them stacked up it climbs up and then climbs down the other side this is pretty neat um it's the first nxt based robot from what i can gather this bipedal that's been able to do stairs there are a few uh, youtube videos some of them where it's having trouble walking um you know one where it falls but uh it does actually successfully do the stairs so that's pretty neat um i thought i would include that because uh you know robots are cool from npr at npr.org intel and ftc settle an antitrust case intel corporation has settled an antitrust lawsuit filed against it by the federal trade commission the two sides confirmed the settlement late tuesday and the FTC scheduled a news conference for Wednesday to release details. Neither side would comment further. So that's kind of what we expected. Intel's, uh, you know, kind of one of those 800-pound gorillas, and every move they make is highly scrutinized. So, uh, you know, they're bound, to, like Microsoft, they're bound to run into trouble with the uh, FTC uh, over certain uh, business practices or, you know, stuff that they do, and that's to be expected. So... Um, I'm not surprised, and I don't think anybody else is either. But uh, you know, it's it's good for them that they finally have a resolution and are moving forward. That'll pretty much do it for this edition of the Geekinator. I know I kind of blasted through the stories real fast, but um, I've got bad news. My Mac Onyx 400F. If you don't watch the Linux news log. My Mac Onyx 400F has uh, suffered catastrophic failure due to a storm rolling through. I'm in Arizona, and it's monsoon season right now, and we get storms all the time, bad storms, storms that knock power out. And um, it, uh, I, I've been having some flakiness issues with it recently. Um, over the last six months or so, sometimes it wouldn't power up and that sort of thing. And this past storm that rolled through did uh, pretty much put the final nail in the coffin for it. And I cannot get it to work. It partially powers up and f looks like it freezes mid-power. And that's all she wrote. Um, it's real unfortunate because uh, the audio quality on that is, is really crisp and clean. But, uh, you know, that's sometimes that's just what you got to deal with. Um, I did go to Mackie's website and looked at other stuff. The Onyx Blackbird looks promising, but it's not actually available. I can't buy it anywhere. And the closest plug-in equivalent I could get would, would be the, uh, the Onyx 820i small format Firewire mixer. But the problem is it doesn't have enough outputs for what I want to do. Uh, Input-wise, it's okay, but it... it the, the nice thing I like about the 400F and the Onyx uh, Blackbird when it becomes available is you have a lot of inputs, both mic preamp and line level, and you have a lot of line level outputs, which for me works really well because um, that was basically the heart and soul of my, my audio system here. I've got multiple computers running through you know, that mixer so, so that I could have sound out and I could route audio from any computer to any other computer. And it made it really easy to do stuff like Skype interviews and, you know, 
host roundtables if I so desired and that sort of thing. So it's been real unfortunate that uh, it died, but, you know, I've had it for five years, almost six years now. So, I, you know, I it almost never shut off. <laughs> so I would expect it to die at some point. So it's, it's kind of a unfortunate but at the same time it will give me an opportunity to p potentially get something that's uh, slightly higher quality once the uh, blackbird becomes available so anyway that's that in a nutshell um everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes you can uh, follow us online uh, twitter.com slash adrian underscore bacon visit us on the web quicksurf.com everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes like i just said and um with that i will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.